Hello, welcome to the channel. Today I am going to do a review on the Predator 9000 generator from Harbor Freight. On the Predator 9000, here are the controls. Of course, we have a low oil alert, and I believe the generator will not run if it does, if it is low on oil. The start button, if it is in the middle, if this button is in the middle position, you can pull the rope and start it turn it off with this button and also this generator does have an electric start you also start it with pushing this button up and it's similar to a car you hold it down while it's cranking and then let go okay 12 volt supply on here if you ever needed to charge a phone you have up to 8 amps 8.3 to be exact and then circuit breakers for the AC, this is for the AC 240 volt and 120, and then also a ground. If you're going to have a permanent installation, you may want to go ahead and follow the safety codes and put a ground on there. Okay, we have the 120 outlets. These are GFCI protected, and they have these little covers on it. I'm not sure how long these covers would last if you used it every day in a construction type situation but they are handy to have if you know to keep it dirt out of the outlets I do like that feature on it and I do like these little covers of, over the circuit breakers and again if it's set in the weather I'm not sure how long these covers would last you have the 30 amp 120 240 volt outlet and this one is 30 amps max this is the outlet I will use if I have to run our house I did run this generator on the house. I, I was able to get the HVS, HVAC running, but it was really pushing it, and we only have, a th I think, a three-ton unit. You probably wouldn't want to push it too far. Now, our whole house, without the HVAC, I think we drew 11 amps per leg, and more than this generator is more than enough to... To run what we have and then also we have another outlet this is a 120 volt 30 amp outlet right here so that's the control panel to the predator 9000 also this is where you check your oil I would suggest checking your oil every time you run the generator and I think a lot of people think well generators just don't last long but I believe if you really maintain your generator, it will last a long time. Also, when I set this up, I did run it. I put oil in it, ran it for an hour, whatever it suggested, drained it. And I think I changed the oil about three times on the first, on that first day. Just to make sure and get all the metal particles out and just do as they suggested. Also, I've got a battery. This battery came out of an old four-wheeler. It's a little bigger than a battery you'd buy at Harbor Freight. You can buy the battery at Harbor Freight, and it'll look a little better on this generator. Okay, here is the choke when you're cranking it. Put it in the choke position. And I've found most of the time when you crank it, you do have to choke it. And then you pop it back to this position here. Now when I shut my generator off, if I do shut the fuel off and I let it I let it burn off the excess fuel, you will see a filter here. That is one of the things I really didn't like about this generator. It didn't come with the filter, but I did install an extra fuel filter in line here just to um, just to make me feel a little better. Of course, pull string to crank the generator and here is the air filter okay air filter not the easiest to open but it works okay this is the air filter in the generator this generator has not been run a whole lot.
Now on this generator, I decided not to get the wheels with it. I think I may either make something or I originally this generator was going to be a permanent, more a semi-permanent install and sit on a concrete foundation with an enclosure. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that now. Okay, as we take a look at the back, we have the carburetor, and I have seen kits online that you can change this to a tri-fuel carburetor. I have not done that yet. That is in my plans. That way you can run it on propane, gas, and I think natural gas. I'm not sure. The buffler enclosure is here. Spark plug is right here. And here is, here's the actual generator part of it and the muffler. Okay, this is the top of the generator, the fuel tank. Of course, your fuel cap. And it does have a little filter to catch some of the bigger stuff in there. And also, I did do as... The manual recommended I put some stable in. Now I also use non-ethanol gas. I really believe in using non-ethanol gas on these smaller engines. It just saves a lot of trouble. And now the manufacturer claims it runs up to 13 hours of runtime. I I really think just by a few calculations you may get a little more than that if you don't have a real load on it and then also the, your fuel gauge for it. Okay, now I'm going to open the door and start it. It's a pretty cold day outside and a little bit muddy, so I'm going to crank it inside and just point it towards the door. So I checked the oil earlier, checked the fuel. I'm going to choke it and turn the fuel valve on and start the generator. In order to check the current, I made a, a cord that to allow me to get to one of the conductors and actually check the current. Also, I'll put a voltmeter on it and check the voltage and check the frequency to make sure we are at 60 hertz. And it, you want to make sure your generator is running at 60 hertz if you're in North America. Six, this is a six and a half horsepower Craftsman vacuum cleaner. I will run it and then also I've got a cobalt compressor that I will run. have it that is my review and look over on the Predator 9000 from Harbor Freight. Overall I think it's a great generator for the money. Now you can spend a lot more and I'm sure the quality of other products could be a little bit more but if you're looking for the basic generator with this size power I think this one is the perfect one. I really like it. If you don't really need that power, you will probably want to get a smaller generator because this generator is really heavy, especially with a load of fuel. As you saw earlier, I put on about, I think, 22 to 23 amps, which is close to 3,000 watts, and it didn't even struggle. It did really well, so it's it'll take a, a good bit more load. I don't like to run my generators more than about 60%. Overall, I think it's a great generator if you need that much power. If you're in the market for a generator this size, I hope this video helped you a little. I'll have other reviews coming up soon of different products. Thank you for joining me, and if you like the video, subscribe.